In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. This morning we celebrate two special days. The first is the Feast of the Presentation of Christ in the Temple, which is actually tomorrow. We transferred it to today, uh, but it's celebrated on February 2nd. And the second is the Sunday of the Publican and the Pharisee, the tax collector and the Pharisee, whose gospel we just heard right now. And I'm going to speak on both of them because they're both rather important. Uh, the first, the Feast of the Presentation of Christ in the Temple. The Meeting of Christ in the Temple, also known as. And this is a very important feast for us as Christians because it is a feast that really defines our lives as well. That we seek to meet Christ. Like Simeon the Righteous a very old man who was waiting to hold in his hands the salvation of the Gentiles, we too wait with patience and seek with patience the very Son of God. Simeon's beautiful hymn, which we didn't hear in this morning's Gospel because we hear the Gospel for the publican and the Pharisee, is that beautiful hymn that we sing at Vespers. Every vespers, Lord, now let us now, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to your word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Simeon, holding this little child in his arms understood the magnitude of what had just happened. <clears throat> understood that now he could indeed depart in peace. He whose departing for him was the preparation for his death. And yet, having held the Christ child in his arms, having embraced him, he could depart this life in peace. So why do we sing that at Vespers every, every night that we sing Vespers? This beautiful hymn which points us to that transition as well. As Vespers is for us the setting of the sun. A reminder even for us of our own settings in our life. That we too are prepared, whether it is this night, or any night, or day to come, for that transition which we have in our earthly death. And just as Simeon was so prepared because he had embraced the Christ child, we too can know that embracing him and embracing the Son of God, we too, with Simeon, can look with joy to that transition. We too can look with joy even to our own death. For we with Simeon can sing, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, which thou hast prepared before our face, the salvation which he has given to us in his Son, Jesus Christ. And so we too can give thanks to God as we celebrate this meeting of Christ in the temple, his presentation, as we rejoice with Simeon the righteous, I think in some of the translations we just heard in our hymns, the old man, that we too can give thanks to God for the salvation which he has prepared for us. And yet our transition this morning that we speak of is not just this transition that we see in Simeon as he prepares for his death, but we also are transitioning now into the season of Lent, as we are in our pre-Lenten Sundays, as we have entered in the, into the, the period where we use the book called the Triodion, the hymn book, for the Lenten season. We make this transition this morning 
Now, especially with uh, the presentation behind us, Nativity and Theophany being over, we prepare ourselves for Lent. And so this morning we heard that gospel of the tax collector and the Pharisee. The Pharisee, a pious Jew, a pious religious person who said his prayers, who fasted twice a week, and yet in doing all of that missed the points of the scriptures. Knew the law well, but missed the spirit. He who would say in his prayers, Lord, I thank you that I am not like those others. How easy it is to be like that Pharisee. To think, thank you, God, that I am not like those others. That Pharisee, so easily found in us as we sit and as we reflect, as we think to ourselves, well, I said my prayers. I came to church on Sunday. I fasted. But dear God, thank you that I'm not like my neighbor. Thank you that I haven't you know, whatever it might be. Maybe, thank you that I am not, you know, fighting with my spouse like he is. Or that I'm not yelling at my kids like she is. Thank you, God, that I'm not struggling with drugs like my neighbor's kids are. Or that I'm not struggling with other sins. How easy it is to be like that Pharisee especially for us as we sit and as we say our prayers and do our fasts. And yet, in this morning's Gospel, we hear who came away from the prayer justified by God. And it wasn't that pious and righteous Pharisee. Rather, it was that sinner. That sinner who sat with the adulterers. who maybe wasn't so pure in what he had done. Who had fallen, and yet had the humility to know and to recognize that he needed God's mercy. It's that tax collector. We don't maybe think of, I know we talked about this a little bit with Zacchaeus last week too, but we don't maybe think of tax collectors the same way they did back then. They really numbered them with the heathen even. They numbered them with the adulterers. With the homosexuals perhaps in today's day. With the drug addicts. And yet it was that sinner who walked away justified. Because he would fall on his knees and cry out, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. We in the Orthodox faith have a prayer that we say, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Sometimes we say it, sometimes we don't. Sometimes maybe we say it without really thinking about what we're saying. And yet it is that prayer, that prayer of repentance that should lead us and guide us every day. Not to judge our brothers and our sisters. Not to judge our neighbors or our co-workers. Not to judge those around us, but rather to reflect on our own sinfulness and to repent. As we prepare for Lent, and as we make this transition in our lives in the church, let us also make that transition in our own lives. Not to judge our brothers and sisters and neighbors and friends and co-workers and everyone else around us, but rather 
to repent ourselves, to ask for God's mercy, for God knows that we need it. Let us, like the tax collector, the publican, the sinner, fall on our knees and cry out for mercy, recognizing that we're not worthy to even look up to God. And yet, in all of that recognizing that unworthy though we may be, God still came to be with us. He still came that just as Simeon would hold him in his arms, he too embraces us, that we might embrace him and give thanks to him for the salvation that he has revealed to all of us. So let us cry out, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner, and then enjoy, rejoice, and enjoy, give thanks to him for embracing us, sinners though we are. Let us worship and glorify him, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and for ages of ages. Amen. Amen.